What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, guys, let's talk about card sets, because one of the things that's really shaken up, uh, at least my expectations and kind of the way that I was looking at the cycle here for Rebellion, is the fact that we're no longer going to have a mini set, right? At least at this point in time, Matt has said that there are no plans. Uh, again, this this could be a collaboration with the DAO, so I think he did leave room in there where it's just like, if the DAO wants to do this and the DAO is willing to pay and collaborate with a team similar to Rebellion, then maybe they would consider it. But... I I would guess that at this point it's probably a little too late in the game. I don't know. I don't know. You know, the team's hands are probably tied with doing a bunch of other things. So getting them to create a whole mini set, right, and then do a major expansion uh, sometime next year would probably be. Uh, well, I, I you know what? I don't know. But my guess is that would be really tough. Now you can go back and look at all the previous sets. So if we go to like Alpha, for example, you'll see that they have this broken down. All right. So there's card sets, and then individually there's are uh, editions underneath. Right. So you, each uh, each set is going to have its core, right? And then promo, its other mini set, whatever that's called, um, or, or reward cards. And you can see this with beta here. So you have beta, core, then there's promo, there's reward, and then there's essence orbs. That was the, the mini set that came along. Then you have untamed, core, promo, rewards, as Mary dice. And then similarly with uh, Chaos Legion, core, promo, reward, and Rift Watchers. Then here comes Rebellion with core, promo. We're going to get rewards soon. But as of now, no plans on releasing the mini set. So what does this mean moving forward? And what are my ideas for, for I'm just putting this out there, into, into the, the ecosystem? Well, first of all, let's break down the timing that Matt had talked about, uh, you know, shortly after I think he came in to the, uh, shortly that he, after he came into the CEO position, right, and Rebellion was coming out. In his mind, right, and as opposed to Aggie who wanted to kind of really push for like a 12 to 15 month cycle, Matt had talked about doing an 18 month cycle, right, where you have the the product available for sale uh, for 18 or for 12 months, right, for a year, and then you go, I guess, six months without it. But again, this is like a year ago or, you know, almost a year ago at this point. So I don't know if things have changed and I'm sure his thinking has evolved. I'm sure the team's planning and resources have, have become a factor in terms of how they plan things out. But if we're still looking at an 18 month cycle, for example, my thought is this, you, if, if, if I was, if I was CEO for a day, not, no offense to Matt, right? But if I was CEO for a day, the way that I would do it moving forward, because now we've broken the system, right? Now there's no mini set that's planned to come out for rebellion. How would you plan every other set from here? Well, okay, you know that you're going to have some kind of reward cards that come into the mix. You know that you're going to have some kind of uh, core set, right? I would take that core set and I would make it not terribly large. And the reason for this, right? The reason for this is because in modern format, you have the previous set that you're able to use. And then if you're playing in wild, right? You're, you're looking at this and it doesn't really matter. You can use your older cards or you can get whatever new cards that you like. So, you know, we, if we go here to like the Rebellion core set, you can see there's 78 cards here, right? Let's go to, and, and I don't, this is just for sale, so hopefully there's not anything missing. Uh, but the core set here for Chaos Legion, for example, is 103 cards. If we go to Untamed, Untamed was 83. Uh, beta... And probably we won't go to alpha, but actually I'm, now I'm curious, 74 for beta. And then let's see, alpha was, you know, 54. So uh, actually it's, it's funny that, that we talk about that because if you look at Chaos Legion, if you look at Rebellion, right, um, 103 and then 78 and then Untamed, I think it was like 84 or something like that, or 83. My thought process is what if you take that core set and then you just divide it in two, <laughs> right? Like so that you still have a mini set because the big thing for me is I like the meta being shaken up, right? As we go, as we go through. Now, what's gonna happen with Rebellion is that we are going to have the meta get shaken up by the fact that we're introducing these promo voucher cards as well as promo cards that the team is going to be uh, releasing. So sure, there, there probably will be promo cards in the future. I'm not trying to take away from that, but I think that there's a heavy focus on promo cards here. One, because the team is you know looking for revenue, but also I, I would bet because they want to help shake up the meta and keep the game interesting. If you just have the same cards for an entire year or six months at a time, like it can start to feel a little stale, especially if you're playing in modern and the meta is just not changing as much. The meta is not as open as something like wild. So 
here would be my thoughts, right? My preferred kind of schedule if we're still looking at the 18 month cycle. It's if you, instead of doing like a huge expansive set with like 80 to 100 cards and then another set, right? So let's see how big it was Rift Watchers, for example. Um, was Rift Watchers, oh wait, whoops, <laughs> I still had core there. Rift Watchers, 43 cards, right? As Merry Dice was 24, significantly smaller. Let's see, Orbs was 12, okay? So I think that you could look at something like Rift Watchers as maybe the the a, a good proxy for this, where if anything, you almost release two Rift Watcher-like sets, right? So you could have a core set that now comes in that's not as bloated as Chaos Legion, that's not as large or, or even untamed, right? So if you're looking to have, let's say, between 80 to 100 cards uh, only, right, then you could still do it in a way where it's like, okay, take 60 of those cards, put them in as like your core set, and then take the other 40 and release them as like the expansion. And then the third thing that's coming gonna come to the mix that will regularly be a part of this is the reward cards for that set. And in my ideal scenario on an 18 month timeline, you're releasing this every six months. So, you know, the first one comes out uh, for the course that will come out six months or so, uh, or, or sorry, at month zero, we'll call it month one. Um, and then you have the, the uh, reward cards launch about six months later. Then you have the mini set launch about a year later at which point, and, and maybe there's not as many car, sorry, there's not as many packs or whatever the case is, right, with that, but it's just, you're constantly adjusting the meta within, within the game on a very kind of like regular expected schedule without adding the additional, um, without without adding the additional like weight on the team to do more right you're taking that corset reducing it and <laughs> you know what's funny what came to my mind you guys will get a kick out of this and i don't mean this in a negative way but it's shrinkflation right essentially is what we're doing so you're, you're we're getting shrinkflation here is what i'm offering to to the the splinterlands community by essentially like reducing the core set all right, and saving a lot of those cards for a mini set, then we still get two different you know, elements that come into the mix. Yes, there will be extra work for the team to design card backs and to design you know, whatever lore and things that they'll need to do, run two different sales. But I also think that if you offer something like that with its own different promo card, you can spur sales as well. And for the team, it doesn't become this like, whoa, everybody comes in and buys right at the beginning. And then, you know, hopefully some people buy at the end as well. It's like, okay, well now every every uh, year, right? Actually every, yeah, every year-ish or so, you're, they're getting, um, actually it's it would, be, it would be less than that because it would be like, you'd have to wait a year to get the cards, but then six months later, you get the new set that comes out. You get what I'm saying? And then you'd wait another year. So there, all I, I guess what I'm trying to say is there would be a regular kind of stream of, of, um, of cash hopefully coming into the team as long as they're making good cards and as long as they're continuing to expand on the game, which I think that's what they're focused on now and hopefully they'll continue to do in uh, you know the near, mid, and long-term future. But that's kind of like the timeline that I had in mind where it's just like, okay, we're not getting a mini set, so let's break up the whole thing now and do something completely different for the future. Don't make the sets as big. Maybe release them, you know, a little bit sooner, and maybe they don't go with the eighteen month cycle. Maybe they they cut it down a little bit. I, I have no idea what Matt has planned for the long run. But my whole point is that now that we've broken this pattern, right, of core promo reward and and mini set, let's try to do something different here on here on uh, out. And hopefully, this will be coming at a time where we'll set a new standard for the you know plenty of players that will be coming in. And I, I'll i close on this because I want to focus on that for a second, right? What we're trying to do here, what the team is trying to do here, and the community by extension, is really set a new standard for what this game is going to look like for a majority of the players. And, and I, the reason I'm focusing on the majority is because if we have three to 5,000 players now, but we want to have 100,000 players in this game, that means 95,000, 95% of the players will be brand new, right? Moving forward once the bull run hopefully hits and we, and we move forward, right? So in that way, this is going to be all that they've ever known. So, you know, get the game to the level. That's what the team is doing right now. Get it to a, a level that, you know, looks clean. It's smooth. It runs well. It can be scaled up and then set new standards in everything that we're doing. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. I'm curious to know though, what your thoughts are on a you know pack cycle release strategy and how you guys will plan it out in the future. Uh, but that is all I have for you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.